So according to ESPN, Tyson Fury win over Tom Swartz proves that he the best heavyweight and showed why he the best heavyweight in the world, which is completely BS. And if you're allergic to hearing the truth, you better off leaving the video as I speak because you're going to hear some shit you might hit the hospital after. So let's get straight to it. So throughout the buildup for Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder, the first fight, we know Deontay Wilder gave Tyson Fury 50-50 split that he did not deserve because Wilder was a champion and he done defended his belt up to like eight times by then. He's the longest reigning heavyweight champion till this day. And Wilder gave him a 50-50 split just to make the fight happen. Because as we know, Wilder is the most avoided and feared heavyweight to this day. No cap. Why? Because he was avoided by Klitschko. He was avoided by Povekin, who tested positive for steroids. He was avoided by another fighter that got tested for positive. I mean, he fought so many fighters that were so scared they had to use PEDs and fight got canceled. And he was avoided also by the one and only Anthony Joshua. But throughout the buildup, Tyson Fury knew that. And he kept mentioning the fact that, oh, your resume sucks, this and that. Even though Tyson Fury claimed to fame is a win versus Klitschko. That's the biggest name he had. And the only name he really had that made his resume stand out a little bit better than Wilder. Due to the fact that Klitschko didn't avoid or duck Tyson Fury. But he ducked Deontay Wilder who had a belt. Unlike Tyson Fury. So that's not Deontay Wilder's fault obviously. But let Tyson Fury tell it throughout the build up. He kept mentioning the fact that Wilder ain't fought this. He ain't fought that. He got a better resume, this and that. But since then, Deontay Wilder fought Ortiz. Then he fought Tyson Fury himself. Try to rematch Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury ducked the rematch where he was finna make up to 40 million in one fight to fight a fighter that's ranked number 63, who's I. Or the biggest Tyson Fury fan never heard of, Tom Storch, for $1 million. Can you believe that? How do you turn down a payday where you finna make up to $40 million and reclaim your position as a top heavyweight and get the victory you feel that you deserved in the first fight versus Deontay Wilder? At the same time, make $40 million, but you avoid all that to fight Tom Swartz, who's ranked number 63, is not the number one heavyweight like Deontay Wilder is. He ranked number 63. You fight him for $1 million. And for the people that's going to ask me where I get these numbers from, do your homework. Dan Raphael, who worked for ESPN. Also, Tyson Fury fights for ESPN. Dan Raphael tweeted that. He tweeted the purses and stuff like that. He always does that. So, we know that's a fact. So, Tyson Fury turned down a $40 million offer for $1 million offer because he signed with ESPN. And that's why people gave him the pass of ducking Wilder. But he does not get a pass over here where we talk about the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The reason why, because he would have got a bigger contract if he would have won the rematch and got the WBC title, ESPN would have gave him a bigger bag because then they knew him versus Anthony Joshua would be the fight for the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. But with the move he pulled, he really gave Wilder all the leverage. And if Wilder decided not to bless him with the rematch, he basically fucked. And ESPN is really done for because they invested a lot of money in Tyson Fury where they won't be able to get it back especially not fighting these bums he fighting and that's what Tyson Fury been doing all along name me a top heavyweight fighter that's not Deontay Wilder 
that Tyson Fury have fought since his win versus Klitschko. I'll wait. You ain't going to find nobody. Since his comeback, where he came back because he really got caught with PEDs and then started drugging to cover up for that. Then since his comeback, he fought nothing but bums. Now, he fought Wilder, so you should be ready for the rematch. If you don't want the rematch right away and you want to test yourself because after you got hit by Deontay Wilder right hand, you want to see if you are the same or not. So, I understand. But at least fight a top 10 heavyweight. Matter of fact, if you want to break, fight a top 20 heavyweight. But not somebody that's not even ranked on the top 50. I mean, this was all scripted. And the reason why I say that is because you had to pay me to watch this fight live. Especially having to buy or order ESPN Plus. I don't care if it's $5 or not, man. You have to pay me to watch this fight. Because I feel like I'm wasting my time and my money to watch this fight. I could be doing a lot of things. I could be making money. Instead of watching a fight that I know 1000% Tyson Fury finna dominate this dude. And not just dominate. I mean... Man, Swartz never had a chance. This fight was so scripted that they made a, a new stool for Tyson Fury to sit on, right? That's a little taller because he's a big man, etc., etc., right? Just to give a little pause for him in the corner. He could have stopped this man in the first round, but they wanted to go to the second round. But the reason why, because they want to emphasize and give attention to this new stool, right? And then they showed Tyson Fury in the corner between rounds and he was not sitting down. So y'all made this new stool for Tyson Fury because he doesn't feel comfortable sitting on a small stool. And then when y'all point to the corner, y'all got Tyson Fury standing up, doesn't need to sit down in the corner because he fighting a bum that's ranked number 63. He out here drinking water or whatever. And trying to make it look like Rocky or whatever. Acting like he fighting Godzilla and shit. But he don't give a damn. Even though he, we know he fighting a bum. Of, of course he don't need to sit down on a stool. So why did y'all made him this new stool or whatever? If y'all did this for the Wilder fight, I understand. But for this bum, obviously he won't need to sit down. But it was just all part of the promotion. Part of this picture that they wanted to paint for... Tyson Fury when he first come to America or the second time or whatever his debut on ESPN comparing him to Terrence Crawford and all that and I understand but do that versus a top heavyweight which he's capable of and this is what pisses me off he's capable of doing that to a top heavyweight but that's what I want you to do fight Dylan White and do that like I don't care but don't fight somebody that's ranked number 63 and then in the second round punches don't even look real uh, Tyson Fury liked this, this guy so much Act like he's finna take him out on a date after the fight Instead of wanting him to knock him out for real for real I mean while the knockout versus Brazil went viral Tyson Fury failed to even have a knockout versus a guy that's ranked number 63 to go viral He couldn't even knock out Tom Swartz in an impressive fashion And he's ranked number 63 they stopped the fight while Tom Swartz on his <laughs> on his feet standing up. Because like I said, if y'all know Tom Swartz, I did a little research. You will find out yourself that he's just not a bum. He's a quitter also. First time fighting someone with a winning record. A guy kind of headbutted him in a way. And he went down so fast, man. I don't know if there was like a, a magnet in the ring. And he had a magnet on him or whatever. But... He went down so fast and tried to disqualify the guy for that. But the referee saw through that BS and didn't disqualify the other person. But just like I said, Tyson Fury was fighting such a bum that throughout the fight, he could have knocked out Tom Swartz in the first round. Matter of fact, he could have beat Tom Swartz with his eyes closed, man. He could have been dodging them punches that was coming in slow motion with his eyes closed. But Tyson Fury obviously didn't want to knock him out in the first round because he was like, you know what? We need some highlight reel. You know, I'm trying to get some highlights out of this guy. So you know what? I'm going to go to the ropes. I'm going to dodge a couple punches. And I'm not going to counter him. I'm going to let him slide doing some silly shit. 
and and I'm gonna act like I'm fighting a real fighter. I'm a I'm gonna be on my toes, trying to act like I'm Muhammad Ali, and this and that. And then Andre Ward, Timothy Bradley are out here trying to promote this crap, man. Instead of calling it like it is, saying why you don't get this bum out of here. Instead of trying to sell us this crap, acting like Tyson Fury is fighting Godzilla and shit. Timothy Bradley out here talking about he's the Terrence Crawford of the heavyweight division fighting someone that's ranked number 63. We never seen no Terrence Crawford fighting somebody that low. Man, they would eat him up for breakfast if he does that. Andre Ward been fighting since he's 7 years old. Haven't lost a fight since he's 12. And he out here promoting the white hype instead of calling it like it is. If Tyson Fury is fighting someone legit... Then give him credit. But if he's fighting a bum, tell it like it is. That's all I'm saying. Andre Ward been through this crap. Timothy Bradley been through this crap. I mean, with HBO, we all know Andre Ward, what he been through with the Triple G and Kovalev. And why y'all doing what HBO did to y'all? Y'all doing the same thing to Deontay Wilder. I understand the other biased commentator that they had. He don't know nothing about boxing. Like I said, if I could see how fake the promotion is and how much of a bum Tom Swartz is and how lightly Tyson Fury is taking him. Man, Tyson Fury waited more for this fight than he did for Deontay Wilder. That's how lightly he took this bump. And y'all here promoting him like he fighting Godzilla talking about this shows why Tyson Fury is the number one heavyweight. Calling him a champion. What is he a champion of? Can y'all please tell me what Tyson Fury is a champion of? He does not hold the belt. I don't care if he's a former lineal champion. He is not the current champion today. Wilder is. Ruiz is. So stop telling us that Fury is a champion when he's not. He fighting... Tom Swartz for the lineal title and you don't have none of the other titles you gave him away because you got caught with PEDs and started drugging after that that's your fault like I said they keep saying that he's a champion he's fighting for the lineal title against someone that's ranked number 63 how much more scripted can this be Tyson Fury in the first round can knock out Swartz all day, but he doesn't because he want to make a highlight reel. In the corner between rounds, they want you to focus on Tyson Fury standing up, not giving a damn about this bum like he shouldn't give a damn about this bum. Duh. That's what y'all should have been saying. Andre Ward should have came out and said, I mean, if I was him, I wouldn't sit down either. I'd start doing push-up to burn some more damn weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean... Andre Ward, like I said, is a person I look up to, and I always will. Nobody can take that away from him. He's a, a legend in my eyes, a great role model, a perfect role model, because he's a great person inside and outside the ring. But he's comfortable. That's what I'm going to say. He's very comfortable where he's at, and he don't want no harm coming his way, and he does not harm anybody. So I would never talk bad about a person like that. And I always will look up to Andre Ward and shout out my kids in the future. That's one person I would like for them to look up to, right? But one thing for sure that separated a Muhammad Ali from an Andre Ward is that Muhammad Ali was comfortable himself. He was doing 90% better, oh, 90%. 99.9% .9 better than the people of his day. But he wasn't content with that. He could have shut up at the time. But he fought for his people. He stood up for his people. And that's what made Muhammad Ali the greatest of all time. Because of what he did outside the ring. He was a greater person outside the ring than he was inside the ring. As crazy of that to say. How great Muhammad Ali was in the ring. I mean in his prom. He would not lose against anybody. He was like Roy Jones in his prime. He didn't even fight in his prime, really. They took that away from him. He took that away from himself for fighting for his people. He didn't become the most beloved and famous person till this day out of nowhere. He sacrificed a lot. 
He gave a lot. Muhammad Ali, like I said, he was living very comfortable at the time. But he fought for his people. And that's what made him the great person and the great role model. And he was he will always be the greatest role model of all to me and to many more. But like I said, the difference between a Muhammad Ali and an Andre Ward, which they're both great men, but there's pedestals to these things. And Muhammad Ali is somewhere that nobody could reach because, like I said, his people loved him. A lot of people that's not even the same color his skin, white people, Hispanic, Arabic, whatever, they love Muhammad Ali because how he fought for his people. How much of a great man he was. He didn't care about himself. He cared about others more than he cared about himself. He always went above and beyond everyone else. To this day. Someone that's following his footsteps is Wilder. Hater, love it. But he fight for his people and you can't do nothing but to respect that. Muhammad Ali back in his day, he was hated. He was in love. He was hated. And... Deontay Wilder is going through the same thing. And Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley both experienced the same thing. Andre Ward experienced it with Golovkin and Kovalev. And he knows that. Same with Timothy Bradley. He went through the same struggle. After his win versus Pacquiao, I know a lot of people felt like Pacquiao won at the time. However, it was his biggest win at the time, right? So much racism came his way. And he knows how it feels. And he knows the shoes Wilder is in. And instead of calling it how it is, being fair with both sides, they promote this crap. Not stand up for their own people. And that's all I'm saying is like, you know, we can't force that on no one. If, you don't, if you're comfortable where you at, um, not everyone is a Muhammad Ali. Not everyone will stand for their people. And you can't force that on no one because you're not in their shoes you haven't put the hard work Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley put in right so they don't want to lose all that they don't want to put themselves in a position where they're going to receive a lot of hate and no love but they forget about the fact that their own people are going to love them and support them as well but like I said they just throwing peace signs they don't want no drama it's cool, like I said, however, call it how it is, man. You know, tell us that Tyson Fury is fighting a bum. Don't give him the credit or more credit than he deserved fighting someone that's ranked number 63. Give Wilder the credit he deserved instead of hating on a brother. That's your broski right there. You're supposed to have more support and show more love to your own people instead of doing the opposite thing. And what Timothy Bradley chose to do is hate on Deontay Wilder because Wilder, maybe, I don't know, is a bigger man, became a bigger star, got more punching power. People keep bringing up his skill level. Y'all don't realize that don't matter at this point. You got Tyson Fury had way more skill than him. You had Ortiz had way more skill than him. He fought fighters. Probably 70% had way more skill. What, what happened to them? They all had the same fate. They both, they all, most of them got erased with his right hand. While they got the power to erase your name out of the history book. And that's why Tyson Fury didn't want the rematch. While they got an awkward style where he hard to counter. He's very awkward. You can't predict his next move. He's very athletic. He got a lot of stamina. He's very rangy. He got a lot of good attributes. Y'all always point out the bad instead of giving the brother the credit he really deserved that he earned throughout hard work and dedication and sacrifice because ESPN out here trying to paint a picture of these white hopes and they great fighters don't get me wrong Tyson Fury is a great fighter but he got to prove that and he ain't gonna prove it fighting these bums look at Wilder's schedule he fought Ortiz then Fury knocked out Brazil in an impressive fashion Who's a top 10 tier heavyweight. He finna fight Ortiz again in a rematch. To prove the first fight wasn't a fluke. The boogeyman right. Then he finna fight Fury who ran from the rematch again. Then he finna fight Ruiz or Anthony Joshua. Look at that tough schedule and compare it to Tyson Fury like I said. 
the champion, the so-called champion that does not have a belt. The lineal champion that regained his lineal status fighting someone who's ranked number 63. ESPN does that time and time again. They doing it with Lomachenko. Bob Aaron claiming that Lomachenko, he has something that all these fighters don't have. Terrence Crawford is not a Lomachenko, he said. He's seen Terrence Crawford before, but he never seen Lomachenko before. Yeah, he damn right. He never seen a, a white fighter do that shit before. But he seen a black fighter does that before. I mean, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, excuse me. Floyd Mayweather was smoke Lomachenko. The reason why Lomachenko fight in a rhythm. Fight Mayweather does not fight in a rhythm where you can read him. Lomachenko is readable. Mayweather is not. And if you fight in a rhythm, Mayweather will eat you up with counters. So let's not talk about that. Lomachenko already stated he don't want no smoke with Terrence Crawford. Lomachenko is a great fighter, don't get me wrong, but he is not the greatest fighter since Muhammad Ali. Y'all must have forgot about Roy Jones, Sugar Ray Leonard, all these great fighters. But all these great fighters have one thing in common. The color of their skin It is not white. And if you're not white, you're not right to Bob Arum apparently because he claiming that Lomachenko is from a different cloth. Like I said, uh, the man who lost to Salido didn't want to give Salido a rematch. Duck a Salido rematch. Duck Pacquiao, an old Pacquiao. But he better than a Crawford. That's what I'm saying about ESPN. And Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley, instead of exposing the fake shit, they rather be on the payroll. Even though they in a position where they don't need the money. But like I said, everyone is not a Muhammad Ali. And if you look at Tyson Fury's schedule and, uh, and Wilder's schedule, you know who the number one heavyweight in the world. The one who won all the smoke. The one who did not duck any fighter. Unlike Tyson Fury, who stood up for the occasion versus Wilder, but then ducked the rematch. And now claiming that he haven't even signed the rematch yet with Wilder. So Wilder, I hit clock chasing, even though Wilder is the number one heavyweight and he can hold the title and he's the most famous boxer till this day so like i said subscribe below if you're trying to get smart about him and if you're trying to get dumb about a second don't listen to these casual ass fans so go watch espn scripted fight <laughs> with um damn tom Schwartz, where they basically made a film man that was like a, a pre-made film where they made a film or how they wanted things to go. They told Tyson Fury, don't sit in the corner. We're going to make you this stool to give you attention. So the all eyes going to be all on you in the corner. This is going to be some Rocky shit. So come out with a trunks that make you look like Rocky, whatever. So, man, this so script, this shit had me pissed, man. Like I said, I know about boxing and the way Tyson Fury was fighting. He won it. Tom Swartz to survive to the second round for all the promotion and all the highlights and Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley saw through it as well if I seen it I know they can they ain't real fighters they know more than I do and instead of calling it how it is they out here going with the flow acting like they don't know a damn thing and promoting this crap and trying to make a white hope out of Tyson Fury but you know what keep using Deontay Wilder name because y'all gonna give Deontay Wilder a bigger payday. And if then Wilder's able to pull off the rematch versus Tyson Fury, y'all can't take away the greatness from Wilder anymore. Because he beat up the white hype that y'all created. And he don't have to be a white hype. But like I said, give him credit where credit is deserved. Not when he's fighting someone that's ranked number 63. Claiming he's the number one heavyweight. But at the end of the day, Wilder, if he beats Tyson Fury, don't do to Wilder what y'all did to Floyd Mayweather. Because at the time, ESPN labeled Pacquiao as the fighter of the decade. Floyd Mayweather beats him. He don't get the fighter of the year award. Guess who gets it? Freaking Ronda Rousey. And she get knocked out the same year. Man, ain't karma a bitch. So, like I said, to this day, Wilder ain't getting his credit. But in due time, he will. Subscribe below. Go to subscribe to my channel also. And peace.